All right, good evening, sisters and brothers. Good evening and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. It is, of course, Friday evening, the end of a week, end of a working week for most people, not for me. It's the beginning of mine. <laughs> um, anyway, we, are, we, are, we have come to the end of a week and the end of a day. And um, we give God thanks for granting us grace to see the end of this day and the end of this week and for his strength for his grace that sustains us not only physically of course and emotionally and mentally but spiritually in our souls uh, that grace that sustains us for all eternity and so let us pray as we come to the end of this day O oh god make speed to save us O oh lord Make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. <coughs> Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <clears throat> okay. All right, let's um let's do this. <clears throat> Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O oh Lord, I will call to you. Come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. <coughs> Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evil doers. But my eyes are turned to you, Lord God, in you I take refuge. Do not leave me defenseless. <clears throat> Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Amen. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation, be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. And I'll collect. <clears throat> Heal us, O God, from all our afflictions. And keep us steadfast in your love. Bind up our wounds. Raise us from death. And lead us to fullness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 
and the um, our our psalm. The psalm this evening is Psalm number one hundred and forty-five. One, four, five. And the refrain. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I, pray, will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is beyond all searching out. One generation shall praise your works to another and declare your mighty acts. They shall speak of the majesty of your glory, and I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. They shall speak of the might of your marvelous acts, and I will also tell of your greatness. They shall pour forth the story of your abundant kindness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his mercy is over all his creatures. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your mighty power to make known to all peoples your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is sure in all his words and faithful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and fill all things living with plenty. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him, he hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over those who love him, but all the wicked shall he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Amen. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. And the prayer. King of the universe, you show the bright glory of your reign in acts of mercy and enduring love. Raise the spirits of the downcast and restore those who have fallen away, that we may sing forever of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, we'll leave the psalm there and move on into our our New Testament reading, which is 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1 to 16. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1 to 16. First Timothy five, one to sixteen. Do not rebuke the, an older man harshly, but exhort him as if he were your father. Treat younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, and younger women as sisters with absolute purity. Give proper recognition to those widows who are really in need. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, these should learn, first of all, to put their religion into practice by caring for their own family 
and so repay their parents and grandparents, for this is pleasing to God. The widow who's really in need and left all alone puts her hope in God and continues night and day to pray and to ask God for help. But the widow who lives for pleasure is dead even while she lives. Give the people these instructions too, so that no one may be open to blame. If anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for his immediate family, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. No widow may be put on the list of widows unless she's over 60, has been faithful to her husband and is well known for her good deeds, such as bringing up children, showing hospitality, washing the feet of the saints, helping those in trouble and devoting herself to all kinds of good deeds. Ask for younger widows, as, as for younger widows, do not put them on such a list. For when their sensual desires overcome their dedication to Christ, they want to marry. Thus, they bring judgment on themselves because they have broken their first pledge. Besides, they get into the habit of being idle and going about from house to house. And not only do, and not only do they become idlers, but also gossips and busybodies saying things they ought not to. So I counsel younger widows to marry, to have children, to manage their homes, and to give the enemy no opportunity for slander. Some have in fact already turned away to follow Satan. If any woman who is a believer has widows in her family, she should help them and not let the church be burdened with them so that the church can help those widows who are really in need. Very practical advice for church leadership. Remember, Timothy is a pastor and Paul is writing to this young pastor, probably less than 30, um, and, and, and is giving him counsel about how to manage particular situation in the church. Now, of course, uh, th that context is very different from our context today. Some of it is very, very, very similar, but in that context, uh, the, the context there is very different. But the principles remain the same. The principles, uh, so first of all, he said, because um, Timothy is a young man and he's saying, you are to treat um, treat older men as fathers, older women as mothers, younger men as brothers, younger women as sisters. And so, 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 so there is that relational um, relationship that needs to be cultivated within the community. That first of all, that everybody is brother and sister, but as a young minister, the older men are, are like father figures, the older women are mother figures and uh, and the younger women are sisters. The younger men are brothers. And I love what he says. Younger women as sisters with absolute purity. And again, that goes back to sexuality and so on. Look after their purity as sisters. Um, you know, look out for their purity as sisters, just as you would your natural sister. Uh, look out for these young women in the church like you would do your sister in terms of their own purity and and so on and and that is that is an advice for any age not just for the church and and Ephesus at, at, at this time that Timothy was the pastor of and he gives some other instructions I mean all I said lots of it is 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 culture bound and time bound but some principles we can pick out. For example, the whole issue about widows. Now, of course, in that culture, um, widows, um, or, 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 you know, widows were women whose husbands have died, right? So, of course, because in that culture, women didn't work, 
for the most part, women stayed at home, look after children and take care of the home. There were homemakers, as we call them today, and um, or, or, or the old fashioned word housewives, <laughs> which, which I don't know what that means, but um, they were they, they didn't, they, you know, they didn't go out and, and, and look after. And so when their husbands die, many of them had nothing. If they didn't have children to, to work and provide for them, many, many rely upon the community to look after them. And of course, the church community was, was famous for looking after widows and caring for widows. Um, it, it is documented in history that the Christian community, and, and, and just to add, not just Christian not just Christian widows, they looked after the widows within the community. They cared for widows in the community at large, even the pagan women, the, the widows who didn't believe it. And for that reason, they were endeared to um, the church, became attracted to these people, and many of them became followers of Christ simply because the church cared for their widows. And so Paul is giving strict instruction to Timothy about these widows and looking after them, taking care of them. He says if widows have families, their families should first look after them. So the church is not burdened by, 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 by too much of this. Uh, there are widows who are truly in need and there are those who their family can look after them. Paul said, uh, the one, focus on the ones who are truly in need. Those whose families can care for them, let them care for them. And in fact, he said that uh, um, uh, they, they, if I can find it, um, yes, verse, verse 8, if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for his immediate family, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. And, it, and of course, these are believers. He's talking about believers in the church. And if, if, if your children and your grandchildren in the church are not looking after you, the widow, then Paul says they are worse than an unbeliever. They are, they are not caring for their own family. Because they don't care for their own family. They won't care for anybody else. And so Paul, Paul's words are very relevant, isn't it? I mean, as I said, the, 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 the particular situation might be different in terms of widows today. Uh, we have a welfare system that look after people, uh, older people, and so on. But, but of course, the church is still very much at the forefront of looking after people. We have food banks uh, and, and so on that help to, to, to people in, our, in, in the community to to tie them over until probably the next payday or something. And, um, and of course, as I said, the church has been at the forefront of this before the welfare state, before the government took it over. It was a church, sisters and brothers, who were looking after the, com the people in the community who had nobody else to look after them. And so we, 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 we hope that by God's grace, we'll continue to do this. Uh, and, and, and so on. And there's, there's this instruction about widows, young widows, as opposed to the old widows. Um, over 60, Paul says. Now, of course, and again, in that culture, the life expectancy was not like ours. I mean, not even this culture. I mean, a few years ago, I mean, maybe 150 years ago, 100 years ago, the life expectancy of women and men didn't go beyond, you know, a certain, uh, 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 not 70, you know, or 80. Uh, today, people are living into their 90s and even 100. Uh, back, you know, 100 years ago, that was unheard of. Um, I mean, naturally, people die er, uh, at, at a certain stage of their lives. Today, we have modern medicine and so on that keeps people going for much longer. But in those days, uh, you know, Paul says if they are over 60, they are beyond marriage age and they, you know, they are much older. Those widows must go on the list in the church for, for, for care and so on. But if they are young women who have lost their husbands, and let them get married, let, let them find somebody else. I mean, this, you know, they, are, they shouldn't be on the list uh, because they, uh, you can still look after them, but uh, help them to move on with their lives, to find somebody else. 
And again, in that culture, getting married for a woman was essential because that's how you earn your living. Not the same for our culture today. Women go to work and so on. Not this, not, very different culture, very different time. But the principles, we can learn from those same principles today. Okay, let's, let's stop there. Let's leave that there. It's good teaching, good, good practical advice for church leaders about how to treat the, those who are um, vulnerable in our society. Let's pray. And so first, let's, uh, let me pray for those on our electoral roll. And um, today, of course, we, I'm praying for Jean Murphy, our sister, our dear sister Jean Murphy. And, um, and we, we remember Jean. We ask God's mercy on her. We ask that the Lord will strengthen our sister. Of course, not just physically. Um, Jean has had... Um, uh, you know, difficulties in, in the past and uh, especially falling over, but God has strengthened her. God has uh, protected her and cared for her and she's still with us, thank God. And we continue to pray that the Lord will continue to strengthen our sister in body and mind and certainly spirit and faith as well. We thank God for Jean's faith. And we pray that she will continue to grow in that faith more and more every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we are praying for Fowler Road today. Fowler Road, uh, uh, Sophie lives on, on Fowler Road. So we remember Sophie and her family and her needs and her, the cares that on our, her heart. We remember our sister Sophie. And may God have mercy on her and grant her the requests of her heart, the desires of her heart. And the Lord will strengthen her and her family in the faith and um, strengthen them uh, in, in mind and body. We pray for all those who live on Fowler Road. And we also remember our sister Angela, who used to live on Fowler Road, but has gone to be with Jesus. And so she, we thank God for her and we thank God for her faith. And we, and we, 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 Pray that we too will be able to join our sister Angela one day in the presence of our Lord where we see our, our, our Savior face to face. And so we remember our sister Angela. And we pray for all others who live on Fowler Road. Lord, especially those who don't know Jesus, who don't have any relationship with Christ. We pray, Lord, that you will shine the light of the, the gospel into the dark into the dark hearts and dark homes and dark houses and dark flats and, uh, of those who live on Fowler Road. Lord, bring them to conversion. Bring them to salvation and deliverance in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And uh, we continue to pray for um, those that have asked us to pray for them. Uh, especially uh, Keith and Ken. Uh, um, we've been asked to pray for Keith and Ken by um, uh, a friend of our church. Uh, we pray for Jane Lindsay, our sister Jane, and uh, Dean, And um, we pray for Doreen and Pauline. And we pray for Dolly and Veronica as well. We, we also pray for Stafford, Doreen's family in Canada. I pray for my friend, my friend's son, Ryan, in America, who's going through a very difficult time at this time in his life. We pray for him. We pray for John and Christina, his parents, as they support him at this time. And we pray for Reverend David and his wife, Bernadette, and all others who are on our hearts tonight. We ask for God's mercy, God's grace, God's strength to be with all of you, all those we are praying for tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And finally, our night prayer. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep, we may rest in peace. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, 
For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord. And in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace and give you rest. Tonight, sisters and brothers, rest from the day's troubles and worries of this world. Rest in mind and body and spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed night, sisters and brothers.